God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope you're all having a blessed day. This is Crystal, and I just wanted to share a very, I'm going to call it a heavy dream that I had last night, and I just have this urgency from the Lord to share it with you. So I'm going to get started. What I saw um, was what looked like Noah's Ark. It was massive. It was also a sunny day um, because the sun was shining on the ark and casting shadows. I saw a top view of the ark first, and I saw mankind or man calmly boarding the ark one at a time in a single file row, and it was quite orderly, only there weren't very many getting on. I maybe saw three people from my view. And then suddenly my view had panned down almost like a camera. So I could now watch from the ground level with a side view of the ark. I saw the backs of the people entering the ark. They were walking single file, like I mentioned, kind of spaced out and calmly through this massive door. I knew, I just knew that this was a representation of the last days and of the rapture. From the scriptures, it says, as in the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the son of man tried my best to find pictures of what I'm seeing, but I'll continue. Um, each person that I saw looked and was dressed the exact same. They were wearing a hat and full clothing like a suit, and each was carrying the same small suitcase or briefcase in their right hand. And I just knew in my dream that they were boarding because the Ark was getting ready to leave. And I noted after my dream that it was my understanding that they all look the same because those who will be taken in the rapture all have that same quality uh, and distinctive heart just for Jesus. We all have that same love. We are all one body and spirit, heart and mind, um, as mentioned in Ephesians 4, 3 to 4. These are the people that our Savior is going to be looking for. They choose to follow Christ with their whole heart and are longing and watching for his return. They are boarding the ark eagerly, eagerly, sorry, awaiting their master. They love him, and so therefore they are very obedient and orderly. Walking single file goes to show you that each man is in charge of his own destiny. There was no one beside him. He walked alone with Jesus in his right hand, his advocate before the Father. I think the cases that they were carrying was Jesus, who will plead each of our cases before the Father on Judgment Day. The suitcase also reminded me of a couple of the parables told by Jesus, like the parable of the ten virgins, the five wise virgins. I think that the suitcase briefcase represents those five who are packed and prepared and ready to leave, who are getting on board the ark, awaiting his arrival, the ones that have oil in their lamps. And then the garments worn just reminded me of that other parable of the wedding banquet um, where they invited the people and then there was the one man who wasn't wearing the proper wedding garments and he was cast into outer darkness um, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These people all wore the same garments, the garments of righteousness. And then I saw the door to the ark. It was like a huge hinge door. It was massive and it was about seven-eighths of the way closed and ready to shut. There wasn't much space left before it would shut completely. So I was thinking perhaps that either represents that last moment of grace offered by our Lord, and also Noah and his family were on the ark for seven days before God shut the door and locked them in. And it also shows how close we are to the end of the day of grace, how there's not much time left. And just also um, to note that the way the sun was hitting the ark, it, how I mentioned before that it casted shadows, it casted a shadow of the amount of space between the door and where it was going to close. And I could see that on the ground in the shadow about how much space was left. The shadow looked like a tiny piece of pie on the ground as if the pie had been divided into eight and this door had been, sorry, had one eighth left to go until it was closed completely. Not sure why I used one eighth as a visual, but that is just kind of how I saw it. And it was just so close to the top. But now that I think of it, there were only eight aboard the ark in Noah's day that got rescued before the flood came. So that's kind of neat that I kind of thought that. And, um, and also in this particular dream, I literally saw three people boarding, which I believe there were only three saved in Lot's day, 
when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. So I feel like God is really showing us a very bold parallel of just how very few people are even caring about Jesus's return, that they are not prepared and not ready, um, that they are too busy loving themselves and this world to care. The door is so, so close to shutting now. The gap was so small compared to the size of the door, meaning that he has given us years to repent and accept him. The door was wide open and he was waiting there for us with open arms this whole time, a free gift for those who will believe in him. He gave us years and years to change our lives, to repent and turn to him and start living for him. A good friend uh, told me when I shared this dream with her today that it reminded her of this verse in Ecclesiastes. Actually, really, the whole chapter from verse 1 to 7, you should take time to read. Then I was transported to a new scene, like in my old dance days where we were about to go out and dance in a live performance in front of a huge audience, and this dance was to tell a story of complete and utter anguish and we were about to do the dance as if we were all in slow motion it was quite extraordinary actually and then we were lit of course there was lighting professional lighting and just creating this mood and so the audience could really see like each pose and expression we were doing in slow motion it's really hard to explain to you guys anyway i believe that we were portraying the emotion of how those that get left behind will feel as well as how Jesus feels inside when those people choose to reject him and he had to leave them there for the judgment that is coming. It was wretched. I could hear the sad music playing and we were reaching out to the sky, hitting different poses to capture the intensity of the emotion, the feeling of despair and emptiness. I just can't even explain it in words to you. I danced with three others, and each of us were portraying our own grief and sorrow, like in a contemporary interpretive dance. And that was my dream. Uh, Three different scenes, the ark with those going aboard of their own free will. The second scene was the door of grace, about to shut. And then just the utter sheer emptiness and rawness of those left behind. You know, it's amazing how God uses something so personal to you in a way that only you will understand. Dance was like a huge part of my life. Um, For about 30 years, I danced, and I just find that he often uses meaningful things in your life to convey a a particular message or emotion. I honestly think this dream speaks for itself. So I'm going to close here. Please read Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 to 7. Um, Don't leave this till the last minute, guys because we don't even know if we have tomorrow, let alone our next breath. He is warning us now that time is almost up. So the question is, how much more time do you need? Do you choose heaven? Or do you choose hell? Each of us will have to stand before God one day soon. And we are each in charge of our own destiny. For this world is passing away. We must store up our treasures in heaven. And for those who give up their lives for Christ, they shall have eternal life. I'll close here for today. But honestly, if you have loved ones in your life that you really care about, please share the love of Jesus with them. This is just so serious now. Time is really short and we need to get the message out. God bless you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Sending love to all of you, praying for you all.